Welcome back to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're gonna play Waiters Forsaken Earth. Now this is a game where you have your very own gang. Now this game is quite complex, there are a lot of different things you can do here. We're obviously not gonna be able to go through all of these in the 20-30 minutes we've got. So I'm just gonna try to show you some of the basics and definitely the combat, because I enjoy that. I enjoy that quite a bit. So let's start a brand new game. So first of all we can pick how we want to look. So we want to be a female, and our name is going to be Samstra. Now then you can pick your origin, which affects like which of these stats you're going to have like mm, beginning points for. So we can uh, pick some of these. We would like to get something like uh, mobilization would be nice. Uh, potentially cruelty is not bad because if you have fear, you can use fear to do law. So we would either want mobilization or cruelty. So I'm thinking marauder is going to give me cruelty and aggression. Yeah, okay, this is great. So we're gonna go cruelty and aggression. Now, here we can pick your sort of focus. You can have brute force, souls, alls, precision wins, and can hurt iron skin. Precision wins is probably the bene most beneficial here because the hit chances are very, very low. Like typical hit chances are gonna have like 40 to 50%. So anything that can, that can increase it even a little bit is really important. It's much more important than like HP or armor because if you can't hit, doesn't matter what your or their HP. So we're actually going to stack like absolutely everything in hit chance. We're just going to go all in here. Just going to try to do our best. Okay, and then here we can focus on, we can have manage leveling or let the gods decide. We're going to have like manage leveling. This is like, the leveling is going to be somewhat appropriate to what you're doing. Now we're definitely not going to be called the spiders. We're going to be called the death bringers. So that you know what awaits you if you meet us. All right. Now we can have some. We have some leadership points. We can put negotiation. It's going to make it easier to bribe people. Aggression is going to increase fear gain, and cruelty increases maximum fear. That's uh, really good. We already have some points there. Determination. We can carry more stuff. That's useful. Organization. We can build stuff faster. That's not bad. Raider slot. Don't care. Subterfuge. Yeah. Mobilization would be good. Charisma. A morale gain is also good because when the, the people have get really low morale, like if you tell them to like search things and stuff, and they're gonna need to search things a lot to get resources, so they get like super upset, like I don't wanna do I don't wanna search. Alright, and now we're gonna leave everything else to normal and let's begin. Alright, now we're gonna go into the wasteland and I'm going to start my very own game. Alright, a new leader. As the previous generalism of your organization expires bloodily in the sand, you turn and face the others. Cowed with fear and grief, they all stare back at you, understanding that the mantle of command has rightfully been claimed by you. What you inherit is a raider organization that is in shambles. Your base of operation can barely be called such, having no buildings or fortification to speak of. And your raiders are so poorly equipped that they pose a threat only to weakest caravans in the regions. Your food and water is dwindling fast, and your other supplies like ammunition, building material, and beer, the most important of the bunch, are also depleted. If you are to survive, you must rebuild your organization to its former glory. You have your work cut out for you. You should first inspect your hideout. Alright, so first thing we're gonna do is gonna set up a thing to build. So this is our hideout and we can fortify it or we can start building things. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build things. I'm going to build this watering hole. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. I'm going to build a um, well. This is going to generate water because we have our resources like food and water and we're going to need them and we want to make sure that we have enough so that our people can kind of move around and, you know, hit down some enemies. Here you can see your roster, your people. Alright, so we have our crew. These first three people are in the party, the rest of them are not. And what you can do is you can do a lot of stuff in them. So first of all, you can change their rank. So normally everybody is like very low level, but you can promote them to either a sergeant or a lieutenant. This is helpful because first of all, it increases their initiative and gives them some bonuses. But more importantly, they will never run away due to low morale. So you want to make sure that whoever you consider to be the best in your crew, you promote them so that they can leave. They can also have special bonuses. Like for example, Dutch is here. She served as an enforcer for various wasteland merchants and therefore she has plus 10 hit damage. So he does, she does 102, uh, she does um, 45 damage as opposed to, for example, me who only does 27. Though I'm a ranger, so that's fine. And uh, she's also actually a ranger, so that's really good. We could also give her a class, so we can give her a specific class which is going to help her uh, sort of big bonuses when we level them up. So we can have like masochist, which is essentially being a tank. 
Helion, which is essentially like the one who does the damage. And so like, um, you know, like the heavy hitter. And then Brutician is essentially like a healer and I think. So she, this one's going to be a Helion. Now she doesn't have any perks, points yet, but then we can pick some for her if you want it to later. Now, for example, I have very low HP. So I'm actually, I'm going to make myself the, sorry, I'm not leadership perks. I'm going to make myself of the Brutician class. So I'm going to be able to like heal and things like that. And once we get leadership points, we can actually use them to like upgrade different things, but we don't have any. Okay. And then we've got a couple of other people here. We've got Alvin. We want to find someone who has a really good hit chance. So that's actually Alvin. So we're going to make Alvin, we're going to promote him to Lieutenant. And we'll make the chess, uh, we'll make her a sergeant. All right, so we've got our people. And one more thing we want to do is we want to give them all a class. So Alvin is going to be, who has high hit points? Yeah, BD is going to be the tank, presumably. And I guess Alvin's going to be also a Helion, the one who does a lot of damage. Okay, so we have sort of assigned everybody in our part and we also got Heater here. Heater, what do you want to be? Uh, he's going to be a tank because he has like a gazillion of HP. Okay. Now you can also change the weapons that they have and things like that. What is really interesting, you can actually eat them. If you don't have enough food, you can actually kill them and you can eat them. <laughs> you can also mount them. If you have enough camels, you can mount your whole group onto camels and you can move faster. Spawning a random toilet in the desert, you decide to make use of it. Why not? Enjoying a moment on your own, it gives you time to think. Your readers depend on you. If you don't keep them happy while also improving your organization, you won't last long in the harsh wasteland. Being under-equipped and having a hideout that's barely functional, your next step would perhaps be to start a small by attacking some of the local caravans. They carry chips which will keep your readers content, as well as trade goods which you can either sell or use to build up your operation. Also, they carry beer, water, and food. All the things your party will require while traveling. Your next step will determine the future of your rule and your organization. Let me actually pause so we can keep talking about this. Here you get resources, so you can see all the resources you currently have in your hideout. And it's going to move on, move out, you can grab more resources and then come back. So actually I'm going to tell my group to go this way. I'm actually going to go at slow speed. Okay, so this is our retreat, so we, we want to go upwards and we're going to go here and scavenge. Now we're going to be able to grab some scrap that's however going to lower the morale. And once we have enough, we're going to need to come back um, to our hideout and give the stuff there. Scavenging blue. Sweating under the sun while loading up the scavenged material, raiders look extremely unhappy as they do so. Several are cursing under their breath. You suppose it does make sense? They become violent raiders because they're looking for an easy life, not to become a bunch of broken back scavengers. We'll have to monitor their morale and make sure you aren't ordering them to scavenge too much. At least not without balancing the bad work with some sizable paydays. Even the most disciplined raiders can be relied on to moan, but nothing turns one around faster than getting a few new chips strapped together. Okay, next up we've got loss. So once you have enough fear, you can spin it and this is going to allow you to establish the new law. This is actually quite interesting because you get an option to either accept the law or not. You can't pick the law. So that's pretty interesting. Let's keep moving to scavenge. Then here we can craft different materials. So we could, for example, build like a helmet or like an armor, potato sack essentially, <laughs> if you want to look extra creepy. And helmet, which does actually give you some armor. So we could craft this. I don't think we have the resources for this. And we need an armor ship building. So the crafting is going to take a while. Here we've got hostages. We could get some hostages once we attack different uh, areas. And a tradesman here we could trade if we were anywhere. Here we can check out the news. And then a locations are going to show you like you can own different locations on the map. I'm actually going to go downwards towards the road because the, on the road it's the, going to be the easiest to found like a caravans. So we want to start moving through the road. Now the, we have oh message to raiders everywhere. A trembling courier approaches your party with a message. Taking it from him, you open and read it. From General Maximilian Montgomery, acting on military jurisdiction granted by the new government authority, we have deemed your sector of the wasteland next for annexation. In 120 days we shall bring your civilization to you, savages. End of message. We can kill the messenger or not. We're gonna kill him. We're the dead bringers, okay? You grab the current and toss him roughly to the sand, firing several shots into him. Seriously? Just use your sword. Don't waste your ammo. 
Uh, I didn't know my character was gonna be stupid. <laughs> Try him before he can land. Turning and face your radios to stare back with fearful eyes. You all oh, got fear. Oh my god, this is so good. You hold the message out for all to see before finally crumpling and tossing it beside the body. The so called new government authority will be coming in 120 days. Oh, we're gonna be ready. I'm still upset that I wasted my ammo. Like, come on. Just use a sword like a normal person. But. Oh, also, by the way, here's the battle formation. So you can actually change, like, who is going to be standing here. We actually have two melee and three ranged, so it's really obvious, but, you know. All right, let's, let's do loss. Let's do loss. I like loss. Uh, where are the loss again? Yes. Okay, let's spin the wheel. See what we can do. Okay. Prisoners only slow us down. We can only execute hostages. Plus 20 fear when executing. Absolutely. We are the dead bringers, okay? I made it clear when I started this video that this is what we're gonna do. Now, are, is anybody gonna come from the lizard killers? Outsiders, don't mess with us, please. Come trade. Uh, yeah. I think... Population 10, there's no way we can beat them. So we, 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 we don't actually need to trade. We're just gonna walk away. Uh, because I need to find like some caravans somewhere and there don't seem to be any going there we could scavenge this probably gonna survive a little bit of morale but we did just kill someone so they're terrified and if you're gonna complain you know things are gonna end very badly for you I need to find some caravans like come on what is this place animal skinners welcome we're on a harmless and peaceful operation here please don't hurt us Ooh. Five. Fourteen people are defending the barracks. We can't handle that. Yeah, we don't have enough to do this. If we were to trade, we could try to get some extra food, water, and meat. Could I buy some water? Yeah, we've got the money. Let's buy some water and let's buy some meat. Oh, we could sell, sell the hides. Oh, we, we don't have any. Okay, so let's just be done. No caravans. Okay, so we're gonna have to go down. Yes, yes, caravan. Go, 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 go. Run, run, grab them, grab them, go. Why are you so slow? Come on. No, I don't want to scavenge. I want you to attack them. Yes. Greetings, fellow travelers. How can we help you? So what can we actually do is we can actually demand things from them. We don't have to speed up attacking. We can say, hey, give me this. And if you give it to me, then I'm not going to attack you. But because I want to show you combat, we're just going to straight into killing them. <laughs> it's actually four of them. That's not too bad. All right, let's start the combat. We're definitely not out resolving this. So in this combat, you got a lot of different options. So we've got the standard attack, which is a 40% uh, chance and 25% damage. What's important is that each of these things costs you some stamina. If your stamina gets to zero, you will sort of lose a turn. So it's going to be quite difficult for you. So you don't want to do that. So what we're going to start with is this shearing swing, which is only 12 damage, but attacks three different targets. So we're going to do damage to all of them. Then we're going to play with our Duchess. So I'm going to be calling um, Zemkat after one of my patrons. And we'll do... Standard attack is 36 damage, 55% chance, or 46 damage, but only 45% chance. Mm, now let's do the standard attack. We want to start focusing on them one by one. Oh, he blocked it. That was cool. Heavy bash, 40%, 29 damage. Skull crack stuns target for one turn. Is there anybody who's doing like high damage? 27, 20, 19, 21. Yeah, so let's actually stun. No, not you. Stun that guy. He's stunned. Now we can do hard shot 57% chance and 36 damage. That's great. How does he keep blocking this? He only grazed me, so that's good. I'm gonna keep attacking this guy. Ah, oh, we missed. We had 49% chance. It was like 49 damage. At standard attack, 40% chance. See, this is a problem. Like, this guy has a very low chance of actually hitting stuff, if you look at this. So, what we could do here is we could either heal, but we could also do hit buff. Plus 1% per number of surviving friendly. So, it's going to increase by 5% his chance to hit next time. Now, let's do a standard attack on this one. Keep on missing. A standard attack here as well. Nice. Another. 
Nice, we got a crit chance. He healed himself, but if we can hit him now... Ooh, we almost killed him. Almost. I noticed that my HP, for example, is very, very low. Like, I only have like... Uh, how do you keep missing that? I only have like 53 HP, so one big hit from somebody could actually insta-kill us. Alright, we've got hard stop or 9 damage, but plus 30% chance of a crit chance. Oh, we didn't make it. Break armor. What's your armor? Your armor is not very high. Apply bleeding. That's actually not bad. So let's apply bleeding to him. Actually, we should have done the bleeding on somebody who's ranged in the back, but that's okay. Let's just do a standard attack. Oh, we don't have... So see, we, we run out of stamina. So we could reload. We could also... Hunker down. This is going to increase our armor. And also help with stamina. So let's hunker down. Okay. See, this guy got exhausted, so this is the problem. If you use up your uh, stamina, you won't be able to do any good stuff anymore. But th they're gonna probably do the same, so it's not too bad. Let's do or like a standard attack here. And then your stamina restarts, so that's quite nice. Okay, they stunned him. How dare you? Are we gonna continue with... I don't think we need to stun him, we're just gonna try to do a regular attack because we should be able... Yeah, he's dead. So now we've got these two ranged scouts, that's the only thing left. We could give them bleeding. No, we can because we're kind of recharging that ability. Pistol whip, 21 damage at 67% chance. Useful when out of ammo. We're not out of ammo, but let's use it anyway. Who oh, can't reach? Okay. Uh, then... Yeah, we're gonna reload here. Use a standard attack on this guy. Ah, oh, we keep missing. They're reloading. Oh, that's gonna cost them. Uh, we need to reload as well, I think, here. Yeah, let's reload. Keep doing our standard. I like to focus on one person at a time. This makes it because then they, they won't get turns as, as often. Just do some of the standard attack now. So there, so this is a problem. So we're gonna need to heal ourselves over there very quickly. Could we do shields up? Hunker down. I'm going to try to stun them. Because I want to make sure they won't kill my character over there. Yeah, I need to heal myself. Where is the healing? A blood plumber. Heal 15 hit points. Good. Ooh, we got killed. <laughs> it's alright, we'll get a new leader. We were a bit too aggressive here. Yeah, we're gonna need to hunker down or just, you know, let's do inspiration. Sure. We'll do a regular shot on this guy. Ooh, nice, nice great chance there. Yeah, we could do something like... Oh no, we can't do the pistol whip just yet. So we're just gonna attack the other one. Because... We don't need to waste our attack over there. Waste our ammo on the poor attack. That should be easy to finish. Okay, now we're gonna kill him. No, still not quite killing him. Let's do... Again, inspiration. Or just hunker down, whatever. I need to reload now. Can someone please kill him? Seriously? I didn't miss that. See, but you can see that the real big problem in this game is like, it's really hard to hit someone. So you end up trying like 20 different attempts before you finally hit. Have you defeated them? <laughs> but I got killed. <laughs> That's alright, we'll get a new leader. Um, yeah. Let's grab all the resources we can. The battle is over and the caravan lies to start in the sand. As radius load up the supplies and forge the saddles for chips, you look over to the, at the pile of corpses, tossed hazardly aside. Kneeling down beside them, you recognize an opportunity to let the wasteland know exactly who did this. You mark the bodies with a crude bloody approximation of your totem. It would certainly put a bit of fear in the hearts of those that discovered the caravan. Yup. You grab a knife, one of the stiff hands, and start carving your totem with the corpses, announcing your presence to anyone who stumbles across the wrecked caravan. Several of your raiders come over and watch with amused grins as you finish marking up the last corpse. Okay. 
As you look at the corpses from your latest attack, you notice a pile of them in the corner moving slightly. Approaching, you frown. Something is moving them from beneath. Pulling several bodies aside, you step back, uncovering a trembling figure beneath. You offer a cruel smile to your raiders. A hostage. We can't have hostages. We made a law. We have to kill them. They find in the wasteland a someone useless to your organization, but somehow holds importance among the civilized settlements. A hostage can be incredibly valuable. The value of hostages, of course, varies, but it could be quite a windfall. Windfall if you were to able to ransom them back. Well, you're gonna kill them. Or you could kill them to send a message. If you were hungry, you could always butcher them for food. And finally, if you're feeling merciful, you could release them. Whatever your choice end up being, this hostage is your property now. Some of you are ready to sit around commiserating while looking at their rifle. One of them looks over. Hey boss, we're almost out of ammo here. We could throw rocks, but I doubt that it will do much. Instead of having the individual killed, or at least horsewhip for talking to you in such stone, but he does raise a valid point. Without ammo for your projectile's weapon, he will indeed be forced to throw rocks at your enemies. Alright, pause. So, hostage. We could butcher him for food. Execute to gain fear. Oh, we could, but we can't ransom him because that's not an option. We could also use him as a human shield. <laughs> that's so mean. You know what? That would have been so much money. Now I kinda wish I didn't sign that well. This is human children in combat. If killed in battle, you will lose this hostage. Yeah, okay, well you we are we already did a dead now. So let's check our roster. Yeah, you can see that now the Duchess is now the general. She's now the leader. And we should be we should gain another person in the party. Like I should be able to move. Actually, I think we might actually have to move to the... Yeah, I think we're actually going to have, to have to move back to the hideout in order to be able to put another person into the party instead of our leader. But yeah, that's, that's what we would typically do. Now, we're gonna sign one more law because I think it's fun. Plus two fear with each kill and plus ten baseline vigilance for each kill. So this is a bit difficult because obviously uh, they're going to, the sort of, I guess, law enforcement is going to be uh, keeping an eye on us, but we're going to adopt it because why not? <laughs> it's just super cruel. I mean, our leader died within two seconds. She had very low HP. I guess I should have put a bit a few more points into her HP. But yeah, regardless, I think this is a good way to show off the game. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, write down in the comments. I can click on the right to watch some other turn-based combat games. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.